Hello, everyone. It's Maureen with the Power of the Tribe and the Rising Star Book Club. Well, today we have a expert in teens and um, and bridging the gap in communication between teens and parents and being able to raise strong, responsible, but also allow our children to have space for themselves and continue to bridge communication, which is so important. So to begin with, I have Dr. Kimberly Shear here today. Her book is Unstoppable Teens, a, a Parent and Teen Guide to Team Empowerment, Fulfillment, and Achievement. And I'm, I'm just, Kimberly, I'm so glad you're here. How are you? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. And I'm delighted to be here. This is going to be awesome. So thank you. So let's, let's go back to, and your book is so important and, and where our teens are and we'll get into teen suicide and rates and things like that. And even now, hello, COVID, but let's, let's start where, where, what, what was your practice before? I know you were already a, a psychologist and had a, um, an audience and, and a business and where did the book come from and, and tell us the inspiration about that. Thank you. Um, actually, I was a social worker um, prior to this. And uh, so I, I've seen a lot. And um, the inspiration for my book, I'm passionate about teens. And through working with teens, I, I primarily work with them in helping raise their self-esteem and their grades and so forth. But in so doing, I see a lot of what's kind of underlying um, the symptoms of the poor grades or, or the lack of self-esteem. And I think it's from really kind of seeing some of those issues that partially inspired me to write the book. Um, and also because I feel that while we can teach teens, you know, the skills and we can help them build their confidence. Parental support and, and being in the know of what they're being taught is so important for those uh, skill sets to become habits. So I just think that just goes together to write a book that supports both parents and teens. Okay. So, and your, your book is definitely a hands-on, almost a manual which is so fabulous. It's not, it gets to the point and really gives guidance. So let's, let's start with, first of all, right. The um, suicide rate. I know um, between 10 and 14, has it like doubled in, in the, in the last couple of years? And, and that, um, and you tell me the stats and I know with, with teenagers, I think suicide is actually the number one cause of death for them. Am I right on that? It's the second leading cause of death, um, and the in in primarily what's underlying that is clinical depression. Um, so that's the leading cause of of them, you know, taking their own life. And um, the suicide rates are higher, but we won't have the accurate statistics from you know CDC until after twenty twenty. Then then they'll have all the statistics. Um, but it is definitely you know, and this is alarming, but it is definitely on the rise between uh, 10 and 14 year olds. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's a tough one. And, and, and they're still babies at that age. I know, exactly, exactly. And I, and, and I want to say that one of the myths of suicide prevention and awareness really is that, um, Many of us think talking about suicide actually might even um, encourage someone to actually, you know, take their own life. And actually talking about suicide with your teen or checking in with them, especially if they've been depressed and even asking, you know, if they've thought about killing themselves, truly just asking it like that, um, you know, they, they will likely tell you. Um, and so it's it, anyway, talking about suicide is super, super important. It does not, um, 
statistically they you know it it doesn't encourage or make somebody want to take their own life and i think we need to talk about it so that we can learn and our teens need to learn how to respond to suicide because oftentimes they're the ones that are going to hear their friends are going to go to them and tell them first most likely it won't be a parent or a teacher so really helping our teens to know how to respond should a friend say that is 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 important so, and then there's, there's other things too, that the, um, the teens are displaying their, their pain. Mm-hmm. I know that cutting is, is a big thing. And, um, the, so as a parent, what we're, we're at, and, and now we're under COVID and then there's even more stress. The normal right. that we had before is gone. Our, our teens are very much isolated, just like the rest of us, but for teens, this is this is a time in their life where their friends and their what they would normally get to do is now on hold. Mm-hmm. So being a parent, what 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 is the first and even just checking in, but what 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 should parents look for when it comes to normal? And that's okay too. So first of all, you're saying check in and check in and talk with your teens. Mm-hmm. What what are what are um, what other signs are there? Because you know, there's always been where sometimes parents have said, "I didn't even see the signs." That's that's critical, and and that's very true. Um, many of us don't see the signs, or we think, "Oh, you know, they're just being dramatic." And um, for example, if it's mentioning um, something like, you know. Nobody would care if I was gone or, um, you know, I just, I just, you know, don't, don't care about life anymore. Um, you know, there are, or if there's any kind of display, let's say, um, your teen usually, um, what do I say? Maybe doesn't really care about their appearance or something. And then all of a sudden they do, or all of a sudden they're the class clown. So you wouldn't think they're really hurting inside, but they are. So one of the real signs is to kind of see if there's anything, the way that they're behaving that's uncharacteristic of them, or if they're um, giving prized possessions away, um, that might be actually a very critical time to uh, really talk with them and, and most likely get them some professional help. Because when it gets to that stage where they're giving away their prize possessions they might at that point have a plan and and then it becomes a crisis like they need they need the support right away okay, well, well let's let's go back before that because there there's absolutely even the mildness of our, our kids being in pain mm-hmm. is still so pressing Mm-hmm. So with what they're going through and, and, and just even what, because you're a parent, aren't you? I am. Yeah. Two daughters. Fabulous. Um, with, with that and, and being able to, and there is a time where, where teens are, are trying to find their independence, right. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and, and have things on their own. So to having their parents being involved, this is actually time of their space, right. Mm-hmm. How how do you even for even normal pain? Because again, the teens are going through things, um, breakups, or um, yeah. it could be grades, it could be just something silly, or you know, uh, nothing silly. You know what? I'm going to take that word back. Right. What? Where? Where is it? Where's a day to day that? Because I, I love your book for that reason because it has so much prescription to it and, and being able to adapt this into how you get to work with your teens and communicate. So can you lean into that a little bit? Absolutely. I would highly suggest, and it is so simple. It's nothing new that we as parents don't know, but we don't always implement. And I strongly encourage every parent to arrange for family meetings whether that's once a week or every other week. And what this does is is a couple of things. Um, At the family meetings, whatever the topic is, it could be where do you want to, you know, where do we want to go as a family vacation kind of thing? It could be, you know, I want a new dog. It could, I mean, it could be, you know, something that light, 
But by having the container of a family meeting, first of all, the message you're sending to your teens, because they're, and, and really all, all ages of children, if they're contributing, is that their message counts, their perspective counts, and it's valued. Um, and they are part of this family and they, they have a vote, so to speak. Um, and that's huge. That's huge to be conveying that message without really, you know, just by your action of having a family meeting. The other thing is that when something is really pressing or alarming, of course, if your team, um, you know, if it, if it is something that, that you are feeling like it is very urgent, then yes, you can kind of take a break from work and, and address it. But sometimes those things can, can wait. And just having your team know that Saturday at 10, 10 a.m., I can talk about it. Or at the family meeting, maybe you're also making a schedule for some one-to-one -one check ins Because certainly if it's about a breakup, they may not want to express that in front of 10-year-old Susie, right? Um, they might want to do that one-to-one -one, and they might not want to express anything at all, but having the family meeting, um, it just, it just allows space for that if they want to contribute. So I highly, highly recommend that. And it's also a, a space where you can also share some very positive things or something that you noticed, you know, John, I noticed that you reached out to a friend the other day and I just want to say that, you know, I, I acknowledge you for your kindness. And that was pretty cool. Um, those kinds of things. It, it, it counts, even if they do roll their eyes and sigh, they're taking it in. Okay. okay. And, and I, I, I love that. And um, it's simple, but it's consistent. And it's, it's, it's just a place where they know that you're there for them. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's talk a little bit. The, 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 the pink elephant in the room, mm -hmm. right? So it's being a teen and, and the, um, the pressure that they're under normally with, with these, um, these super schools that now only a 4.0 is not enough, that you need to have a 4.5, taking a, every AP and also then making sure you're doing your sports and, and it's a lot of pressure. So... Mm -hmm. With that, that's the that was the norm for these kids, and now we threw COVID into it. Mm -hmm. how, how has your practice adapted, and and what are what are you telling parents who, when we don't have the answers that our kids would look for us for guidance, and we don't have it either, and and so how have you what have you spoken and and what have you said to your clients about this, and your kids? Yeah, no, that's a really good point. I think, I think again, just uh, super important to be honest with our teens. And that doesn't mean that, for example, with COVID, a, an honest response might be, I don't, for example, I don't know when it's going to end either, or I'm frustrated too. But here's what I do to help me, or here's something, um, you may not even want to give advice, but um, just being with them in that space and saying, you know, it's, it's unpleasant for you as well. Um, but you're there to support them. And, and what can, what can I do for you now? What can we do together to kind of make it better? Let's, let's bring through some brainstorm, some options, um, would be one thing. So that's kind of being honest, but you don't want to get to the point, you know, um, over, overly say, you know, oh my gosh, this is, this is frightening. And I don't know when it's going to end. And, oh, I've talked to your father and he's just, I mean, you don't want to give too much, but just enough to let them know that you're, you know, it's, it's like that for you too. And, and um, maybe think through some, um, some options to help them improve their mood, but also give them some sense of control. Because the other piece to this with the COVID, which is different um, than, than like a, a car accident, for example. A car accident is very traumatic and boom, it happens, it's one incident. COVID, unfortunately, it's, it's like the smaller trauma, but it's pervasive and it's persistent and, and neither you know, adult or teen um, 
we really are out of control. We don't know what what's you know we didn't know if it was going to be all line learning for example we didn't know i mean there were so many unknowns so just to be sensitive to that um that this is kind of a trauma and helping your teens identify what they're feeling and where they're feeling it in their body um and that is a skill that will carry it them through really any life challenges so that they can start to identify um instead of and 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 uh, identify it in their body and and then work through some things instead of just kind of reacting, I guess, um, and not not understanding their emotions and what their needs might be. Can you um, expand on that about how they they feel in their bodies and what that looks like? Well, a great example actually is you know we've heard the idiom you know butterflies in my stomach. So when you get nervous, so that might be. I mean, that's an example of you feeling anxious. So instead of, you know, being able to identify it as, as anxiety, or I'm feeling nervous or nervous sided, as my daughter says, combination of excitement, and nervousness. Um, and now I've identified it in my body. So that's, that's the first piece to it, awareness. You have to have awareness before you can change it. And, and then you can start thinking about what it is that you, that you need for you to, um, I, I guess, get a bit more grounded and gain some perspective and release some of that anxiety. But here's the thing, if next time, just at random, all of a sudden you have butterflies in your stomach, you know that, you know to pay attention to that. And then maybe you can think through what's going on in my world that, that might be underlying this, that's triggered this, so that you're processing through your emotions, or at least it's a start. Okay. Um, that, that's really helpful. And within that, then that may go into breathing exercises or meditation or, or those other tools that can help with relieving stress and anxiety. Yes. And one of actually one of the exercises in my book, um, I do encourage uh, teens and, and parents to think about ways that they like that are beneficial to um, helping them move through kind of a hard day or stress and um, some spiritual ways, some ways to get out their creativity. I mean, for you, it might be gardening. For me, it might be playing guitar, but making a list. Um, what kinds of physical exercise or physical activities do you enjoy doing? Um, and making a list in kind of all those different areas uh, so that you have a go-to list to with some ideas to relieve stress when you're stressed and that's a key component really with anything it to have the plan beforehand before you're in crisis of how you can take care of yourself so I think of it as a self-care list I guess but in a sense similar to the the piece in your title it's an empowerment piece it gives them the tools to be able to shift and navigate through these these feelings Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so let's let's talk about also now oftentimes when it when it comes to our teens when it comes to suicide when it comes to even um mental illness and as a society we 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 closet it and and we 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 don't talk about it and so within that um for parents that um maybe just wanting to have resources or what, what, where, where do they go if there is a crisis? What, where do they go? What does that look like? And, and what, what are the, the chain of events to then if some, some action needs to be taken? Well, if they get into crisis, if it's suicide, um, or, you know, you suspect that at all, there is the, there's a crisis text line and there's also the suicide prevention lifeline and that's for crisis only so they can call they'll be talked hopefully down calm down talk out of it for the moment and then you know i would highly recommend obviously a uh, therapist psychologist and um, they may even recommend a psychiatrist because chances are that you know your teen is clinically depressed Um, so they, you know, um, antidepressant medication, uh, 
would be beneficial in addition to in addition to the therapy as well. So is there a team approach when it comes to this? Do the other is that you don't want something to be put on your child's permanent record. So again, this is the the keeping it in the closet. And um, do you do you work with the educators? Do you and has that changed? Have we become more um, more accepting and more clinical about depression in teens versus avoidance and and pretending it doesn't happen? Are we moving in the right direction? We're moving in the right direction, but it's going to, I think, take a lot of time. But absolutely, there's more awareness of it. It is on the rise. Um, depression and anxiety, especially COVID, has even uh, worsened that. Um, and again, we'll get the stats in 2021. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're 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 it is moving in the right direction to destigmatize. Now, with respect to education. It's still helpful to have, um, if that's the case, and if you're, it's still helpful to have another professional, um, educational therapist, somebody like myself, um, to help with that. Because the difference is, is that if, for, I'm just going to give a scenario, let's say um, this is a college student and they started on a new antidepressant meds and a side effect was uh you know, heavy sleep or whatever. And so, um, so it's trying to work with them, but you know, this switch of medication happened right in your finals. I, this isn't a time where you're going to miss your class and wake up late and, and not be able to study. Now, te- you know, we don't want to use that as an excuse, but, but when you have somebody working with them as well in the education or with their academics, um, like an education consultant, they can help talk with the teacher they can help with the learning center um getting accommodations they'll know what kind of testing and so forth um but but they but they can help because it needs to be a team approach it wouldn't be the case where a student goes to teacher and says you know i switched my medication and so i'm you know you can try it but i don't think a teacher is necessarily going to say okay i understand i mean it really needs to come from a professional and a therapist can do that as well Okay, well, let's let's also then then lean into that. Um, being able to find the right therapist can be daunting as well. Where 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 do people find someone like you? And and and, and being able to know that they're they're not just waiting wasting time when it when it could be so crucial that they they need to get help. So how does someone find someone like you? With I'm sorry, I'm kind of thinking of two things are going in my mind. With someone like me, what what you could look up, like educational therapists, um, education consultants, but I will say I feel like I'm e- unique in the sense that yes, I- Yes, you are. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, I have that expertise, but I also have kind of the clinical psychology background as well. And so I, I really do have, I feel a really comprehensive approach and I think it takes that. Um, but, uh, but certainly an education consultant, educational therapist can help with accommodations, can help with, um, you know, lining up these resources and stuff. But so can a therapist, honestly, um, could be, be willing, I'm sure, to write a letter or talk with the teacher um, if a grade was impacted uh, due to a mental health issue. And I do think the schools and teachers do uh, respond favorably to that, to other professionals um, advocating on the student's behalf. As far as finding um, great quality uh, therapists and, and psychiatrists and all of that, I think it's really, honestly, with anything else, it's not always easy to find that. And unfortunately, many of us go about it through trial and error. The only thing that I would recommend is talking to your friends to see if they, if they're, you know, if they have a recommendation Um, and then, you know, having a list of questions to ask the therapist to see if it's a good fit. But the main thing is your child needs to find it a good fit. 
or it's not going to work. Okay, so, and and so even some basics of keywords to look because there there's there's a lot of therapists out there, and there are also therapists for 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 many different reasons and purposes. So what are, what are the few keywords that the parents would look at to disseminate um, from the big pack and to start working with their kids? I would think you know for me any somebody who works with uh, trauma, depression, anxiety, um, you know, and that they specialize in teenagers. I think with psychiatrists, um, I don't know how I'd phrase it, but one thing I'd be looking for, there are psychiatrists that um, simply prescribe. And then there are psychiatrists that talk a little bit more. And I really feel like the you still want the therapist because that's kind of like all talk, um, but you also want the psychiatrist to, to, you know, have that rapport and relationship with your child as well, um, because that's when they're going to get more information and they're going to be able to, um, I, it's just a better rapport. Um, so I, I would look for that. Not all psychiatrists are, um, also kind of do the therapy piece. And the other thing that I would really stress with parents on this is that, oh man, you know, the psychiatrists are the experts, right? With the medication um, or especially the, the mental health medication, psychiatric um, medications, because, and they can, they know, I mean, like they can say, well, this is an antipsychotic, but if we use just, you know, two milligrams of this and we mix it with this, I think this would really work, for example. Um, and that's that's important. Whereas a doctor, I mean, a doctor, it's good to rule out any organic, you know, um, reason for maybe depression. But for the doctor, unless they are uh, somewhat specialized in mental health or even take a, a passion in that direction, um, they may just prescribe your standard antidepressant, for example, and call it good. So that's why I would recommend a psychiatrist. And then the other thing, parents, is that if you feel like the medication isn't really working for your teen or if your teen tells you that, don't hesitate. There are, again, lots of different combinations and medications that they can take. Don't don't get stuck thinking that's the only one and it's just not working. So let's stop it and oh well, kind of attitude. So um, if, if, if uh, someone in the audience wanted to, to work with you and, and what that looks like and, and, and where, are we, where are you going? So tell them, tell them how they can get in touch with you and, and um, what options there are. Thank you. Uh, yes, my website is www.afi, the number four, me.com. And um, I'm in the midst of, of um, what I want to say, cleaning it up a bit, um, changing it around. However, information is still there. And I also, you could go to meetwithkimberlys.com and schedule a free 30 minute breakthrough session. And we can talk about, you know, one of your team's biggest challenges and I can give you some suggestions. Um, also, I'm great for resources, really. I am pretty well connected. Um, it's no, there's no charge for me to, you know, give some recommendations based on what you're struggling with, with your teen. And as far as I, what I offer, I offer one-to-one -one academic um, coaching really. And, and that is also counseling is mixed in there because as I work with the teen, they often tell me things that they're not going to tell their parents. Um, and so I can work work with that. And um, I also do group academic coaching and there, there's a, there's a lot. Um, I want to do some life skill camps as well. So, you know, check out the website and, and return um, periodically so you can see new programs and stuff that I'm offering. And one, one thing too, I also want to say is I provide cognitive um, assessments 
And that could be independent of the coaching. I include it in both my group and one-to-one coaching because I think it's really important that we understand where our team's strengths are, that they understand it so that they can leverage those strengths and learning. And school does not have to be a struggle. You don't have to grit your teeth and, you know, persevere through it. You can actually learn skills and very creative strategies to make it much easier uh, for you. Okay, I, I, I love it. so your your website, your book, what you stand for is absolutely resource for supporting parents and teens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and what what does the, the the website stand for? Academy for Independence. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. So this way we have a little bit of a little stick in our minds. All right. So what's what's to come? What's what's in 2021 for you? I'm hoping some life skill camps, um, that would be really cool. And, um, yeah, and just doing the, the, um, academic uh, coaching really through a group program and, but I'm always up to stuff. In fact, you know, I have my friends say stick with one idea at a time. So I'm always kind of creating different things. So we'll, we'll see. And, um, and I, yes, my book is a great resource and it is available on Amazon. Um, and I did do it, I wrote it. So there's, uh, I, I developed a unstoppable teen model and it goes from purpose through kindness, self-esteem, communication leader. It ends at leadership, but there's seven elements And I also divided the book. So those are the topics, but I divided the book. So the first um, part of the book is dedicated just to parents for each one of those elements in the model. And then the second part of the book is just for teens. Again, taking those same elements, but relating it more into a teen format and having more interactive exercises and quizzes. So it's more fun for the for the teens as well. I I have to I have to say thank you. I thank you for standing for our teams and and in um, giving parents some tools mm-hmm. to navigate in this um, it would normally be a um, a not trying but normally be a, a place that takes a lot of effort and communication. And now with COVID, it's turned it on its head. So um, I just thank you, Dr. Kimberly. I, again, can you repeat your website again? And I'm going to have it in there. But the, get one, let's let's get the resource out and, and also repeat the book title. OK, thank you. So my website is a F as in Frank, a F I the number four me. So Academy for Independence and and yes, my book is Unstoppable Teens, A Parent and Teen Guide to Teen Empowerment, Fulfillment, and Achievement. I love it. Again, th- thank you so much for coming on and thank you for all your great work. Everybody, Dr. Kimberly Shear and her book is on top, Unstoppable Teens. Pick it up and put it out there and um, let's all start doing our parent meetings, right? Our family meetings. I love it. Thank, thank you. you and, and uh, best wishes and we will be seeing you again. Awesome. Thank you very much for having me.